Hello and welcome to the video. This is an overview and review of this thing here. This is the GEP RC Mark V. This is their latest model, a 5-inch freestyle setup, built like a tank and available with either analog or the HD system in it. Interestingly, with the HD system, I've got mine with the full DJI Air unit, which gives you the twin antennas. Now the way this is put together is the usual quality that you get from GEP RC. Unfortunately that doesn't come cheap, but what you do get is a 5 inch freestyle frame with wide X-arm design and a really nice camera protection piece at the front made from looks like CNC'd aluminium side plates. It's equipped with GEP RC's uh, F722 HD BT flight controller. So this not only plugs directly into the DJI system for the HD stuff, but also has the Bluetooth connectivity as well. The ESCs inside this are 4-in-1 50 amp ESC unit uh, paired with GEP RC's 2107.5 motors and available in both 4S and 6S. I've got the 6S in here to have a go and see what it's like. Now it is shipped with two different 3D printed action camera mounts that can go on your GoPro, your naked GoPro 8, something like an Insta360 Go 2 or a peanut camera. So if you wanted to stick an action camera on this as well, uh, this is a really fun quad for not only the kind of freestyle flippy floppy action, but just for going like stink and getting some great footage while you're doing it. So the headlines for this thing are going to be the frame design and the way it's finished, uh, particularly with the alloy side plates at the front. Again, it supports the Bluetooth wireless connection, so you can set things up at the field. And it is really designed more for freestyle with the wide X-arm design. But I like that. I, I think that provides a really good filming platform as well. Like that extra uh, wide arm setup gives you a little bit more stability, in my humble opinion. Again, the HD version is coming equipped with the DJI system and the original Air Unit camera. Uh, if you get the analog version, it comes with their latest RAD VTX. I think that goes up to something wha wacky like 1.6 watts. And also the Cadix Rattle 2 camera, which isn't a bad camera. Lots of different receivers that you can get in this. I'm flying mine with the DJI FPV controller, so I don't need a separate controller. But if you wanted to, you could put anything you want in here, including Crossfire, Express, LRS, FreeSky and whatever. Behind the camera, there's some quite cute things too. Uh, there's also the setup for not only the buzzer, and I'm really pleased to see that they've put a buzzer on here. There's more than enough room, and it doesn't half help when the thing comes down in a field that is full of long grass, or it disappears into a hedge, or into a hedge row, and you're trying to find the thing. You can get close using my RSSI trick, but then you kind of rely on the buzzer, and it's great that not only the buzzer is mounted in this little 3D printed piece, but also there is the big capacitor as well. So in terms of the specifications, again, this is the GEP RC Mark V HD Air Unit Quad. Uh, wheelbase is 225 millimeters. The top plate on this is two and a half millimeters, as is the bottom plate. The arms are five mil thick. The flight controller is a Span F722 HD Bluetooth capable flight controller. Uh, IMU 6000 SPI connected IMU, pretty standard stuff these days. ESC again is the Span 50 amp BL Heli 32 4 in 1 4 to 6S ESC set up in the middle. VTX is the air unit module, and the camera is the air unit camera. Motors are Speedix 2 2107.5 1950kVs on my on the 6S version like I have here or the same size motor but a 2450kV for the 4S version. Recommended battery for this is on a 4S going to be a 1300 to an 1800 4S LiPo. For a 6S you're only going to need a 1050 to 1550 battery and I'm going to use one more towards the 1550 size just to give me a slightly longer flight time. In terms of the beta flight setup, let me very quickly go through that. Again, dump and diff down below so you can have a look. Uh, the data flash has something in it which is good. Nothing really in the configuration apart from the MSP stuff set for the DJI on-screen display. Again, no GPS or anything like that on here. 
standard motor direction, D-Shock 600, 8K gyro, 4K pid loop frequency. That could be higher. This is an F7, um, and there is a lot of damping on this frame. Everything looks pretty standard here. The D-Shock beaker configuration isn't turned on, but then you don't need it because it has a separate piezoelectric buzzer. Failsafe is set to drop. There is an awful lot of profiles and rate profiles in this. I'm going to fly it on the default one. Again, if you want to look at all the different ones, do check out the dump and diff link down below. Uh, in terms of the modes, uh, this is what's set up. I would recommend coming in here and tweaking things around to how you want it to work because uh, I actually have the switch assignments different on my air unit. The other thing as well is the on-screen display has pretty much nothing in it. Uh, this does support the DJI OSD, of course, so I would move things around and put some extra information, things like current draw on here. I like to just keep track of that. So, dump and differ down below. Let's go to the field and actually talk about what it's like to fly. In terms of the flying, there are no surprises at all. I'm guessing about six minutes on 1100 milliamp hour 6S pack that I've ended up flying this with. It is incredibly stable, thanks to those kind of standard X slightly wider arms. And the 6S version I have here has a huge amount of power, hovering at under 25% throttle without an action camera. It is also very, very quick in the 6S configuration as well. It's probably still quite a beastie on 4S, but if you want to fly it like you stole it, the 6S is just lots and lots of fun now with it being 6s there is lots of noise on high throttle when you're punching out or traveling quickly it sounds like a very angry six foot hornet is buzzing by your ear so this isn't one of those models that you're going to be able to fly and keep it under the radar particularly if you start flying it aggressively and having fun the tune is forgiving and easy to fly out of the box some pilots will want to tweak the rates. The rates are a little bit lower than this model could probably handle. But that does mean that if you are a relatively new pilot, this is not going to bite you the first time out that you try and fly. Landing at the end, the motors are completely cool. So are the ESCs. The air unit at the back is getting a nice lot of cooling out where it is. So, as I said at the beginning, no nasty surprises here, just a ton of fun to fly, and very, very capable. So it's nice to see a full-size air unit in a model again like this, particularly with the two antennas. I found that the reception I've been getting has been excellent. And it is using the DJI camera too, and that really shows in the flight footage. The image just looks beautiful. I'm also impressed with the manual that comes in the box that will help a new pilot get it set up and bind their FPV goggles and DJI FPV controller to it to get it all flying. It's a really nice touch and so many things come these days, even these expensive models from people like GetRC don't come with this kind of manual so it's a really welcome addition. Very solid construction of this thing, uh, so it is going to take some abuse. And it has the weight to back it up. It feels a very solid piece of kit. The weight of the frame without a battery is about 400 grams, but it handles that weight easily. And that additional carbon fiber and all of the strengthening along with the metal plates around the camera do make it a very rich, very solid piece of kit that can take the odd knock without breaking anything. Construction is excellent with good soldering and component choices. Pretty standard from the team at GEP RC. They tend to put a lot of effort into building their quads. And when you tend to hear that they're doing a new one, you know they've put a bit of thought into it. They're not throwing these things together. Only one thing to be aware of, really. I'm really finding things to struggle to nitpick on this and that is be aware that it doesn't have a GPS so there's no beta flight rescue mode and there's obviously no OSD elements for things like altitude and speed which can be fun on a fast model like this to just see how fast you're actually clocking up and down the field. I'd say this isn't a racer it's too heavy and too sturdy it's more of a HD freestyle quad that can take a lot of punishment. This is perfect for a powerful, sturdy all-rounder if you're looking for a well-built quad that has the HD system installed. 
This, for me, gets one of the five pill ratings. Occasionally you get a quad in that just does everything you want it to and doesn't let you down in any way, shape or form. This is one of those models recommended. Thank you for spending your time today watching that video. You can find me in all the usual places on social media. And if you're trying to learn about a subject, then check out the playlist. All of my videos are organized into easy to follow playlists that if you're trying to learn a topic, will take you from the basics right the way through to some pretty advanced stuff.